with BMP Tuning. Today we're going to be installing the new South Bend uh, clutch on our 2023 manual Supra. Uh, this is the factory clutch. Um, a lot of you guys are experiencing issues with this clutch even with factory power levels. So once you increase those power levels to even you know 450 from the JB4 or if you go even more extreme than that, uh, then you're definitely going to have issues. It's not going to hold and you're going to be looking for a replacement. Uh, this is equivalent to their South Bend Stage 3 uh, Endurance, which should hold around 600 crank torque. Uh, this is a prototype unit, not only for the Supra itself, but also prototype in material. Uh, this Kevlar material uh, is made differently than their other Kevlar materials. Uh, and because of that, they're trying to get the coefficient of this to hold more in the window that you have with Kevlar. Um, so, if, in a in layman's terms, you have a window of torque uh, that the Kevlar is very, very good in. If you go over that or under that, it can either slip or overheat. Uh, what they're trying to do with this is allow that window to be larger. Uh, that way, more people can take advantage of it and have a nice, reliable clutch uh, holding the power that you're going to be putting down with your Supra. Uh, so those are the main differences as far as weight is concerned. This Both clutch assemblies weigh basically the same. We'll put those on the screen here. Uh, and from there, we're going to go ahead and get this in the car and get you our first thoughts on not only the way that this feels, uh, but the way it holds the power that we have currently on the car. Uh, get a lot of miles on the car uh, so that we can report back to you guys with what we like about it. All right, we are working on getting everything disassembled to get the transmission out put in the new South Bend clutch. So, so far, as far as this assembly goes, we've already got a bunch of panels off from some of the previous work that we've done. Um, all the underbody stuff will go back on once we finish, but got all the underbody panels off that we're gonna need to take off to get all these components out. Uh, we just got the exhaust down, and we'll probably be taking down the downpipe here shortly so that we have better access to the transmission. Uh, next step's going to be getting the drive shaft out and then we'll be tilting the engine and transmission assembly back to disconnect it. Alright, so we are now disconnecting the drive shaft from the differential and the transmission. They are held in a few different ways. The Guibo itself is bolted to the differential and the transmission, but the drive shaft is bolted to the Guibo with uh, 18 millimeter hex head bolts and 18 millimeter hex head nuts. So you just get a set of wrenches and you can go in on it. Of course, if you like power tools, power wrench doesn't hurt. These are gonna be torqued to high hell. All right, so we got the back of the drive shaft disconnected. The bolts are just holding it in to the differential and. We need to get the front disconnected, but to do so, we've got to have a little bit more access, so we're going to get this bracket off. The bottom of the transmission mount's already been removed, but we've got to work with some pretty interesting space here. And I think one of my ratcheting wrenches might be able to fit in here, but we need to get these, uh, basically, the mounts moved out of the way so that I can get access to these guys and get this bracket off to get the drive shaft off, which then we'll remove and start working on the transmission. These are T-55s. I know it's a lot larger than what a lot of people have in their pool chest, but definitely good to have on hand. There are some tight spaces up here. And with the way that this transmission is shaped, or I guess the output shaft on the transmission, you can't fit the box end of a ratcheting wrench on there. So, you gotta hit it with the flats. You hit it with the flats, you gotta have the right angle. Now, if I was smarter, 
I wouldn't have engaged the emergency brake. Actually, I am smarter. Hold on. When you have the drive shaft out like this, even though this one uses a, uh, a U joint here, you don't want to let it sit at full rest because it can put a lot of strain on that. But also, the center drive shaft carrier can be in the same boat. You don't want that bearing to have a bunch of stress on it. So we now have the drive shaft completely disconnected and we will gently support it out of the way and wiggle it off the transmission and here we have a super drive shaft and we will be upgrading this center bearing as soon as we get a kit in um, but otherwise this will be set to the side for now and we'll keep on plugging away so we've got some stuff that we need to remove now to get more access uh, we're going to be taking off these panels so that everything is free and clear here the downpipe will come out just to give us a little bit more room. Um, and then up here, we've got our shift linkage. And we've also got, it seems we had a support bracket, but we'll get that all disconnected. There's a little clip that secures this on, so we'll pop that off. Get everything loose and disconnected from up there. We'll need to disconnect the clutch. And we should be able to start pulling the transmission from the engine. All right, so this bracket is part of the shifter assembly. There are a couple ways to get this down, and one of them would have been to disconnect the shifter and everything up top and then coming down with it. But after further inspection here, I found that we've got a couple clips up here that I've disconnected and they rotate up. Now these clips are pins. So we'll take these pins out. And now this should be disconnect yep, disconnected from the transmission. And it's out of the way. And then there's a couple ways that we can go about the shift linkage. We can either take it out from up here, but there's not enough room to really get it out. So the easier way looks like it's going to be to take the clip off of here and then disconnect the shift linkage from the transmission directly. So we're going to go ahead and do that. These little clips are a little tough, but uh, the pin goes through this and it has a ring on it that this engages onto. So you'll need to pry this up to be able to get it out of the ring and then it slides right off. Now, with any luck, we should be able to pull our ship linkage right out like this. Boom. And that can just hang out of the way. Now we are completely disconnected back here. And we'll need to tilt the transmission down a little more, get our clutch line disconnected, and make sure that we don't have any electrical connections up top we should be able to start disconnecting it from the engine. So there is one electrical connection that I can find right now that's on top of the transmission. And I can't see it yet, but it's about halfway down the middle of it. I can probably get it disconnected, but I'm gonna wait until I start moving things forward. I've got enough play with the wire where I'm not worried about it getting caught up or anything, but being able to see it's gonna be quite helpful in understanding exactly how we can get it off. So these two are going to hold on this bracket for the downpipe. So when reassembling everything, just make sure that that goes back where it belongs. Now, keep an eye on all these. 
take them out. I'm not entirely sure, but a lot of times these will be different lengths. So these ones are the same. We'll keep them with the bracket so that we know where they go. All right, so we've got this disconnected and out of the way, and we've pinched off our supply so that we don't leak any clutch fluid or brake fluid for the clutch. Now, up here we've got this little spring clip that sits here, and they can be a little tight, but just work it up out of the way, and you can see that it'll start to move up on top, and you can get a little device in there, like a screwdriver or a pick, and pry it out. Now, it doesn't have to come all the way out, it just sits up on this top ledge. Then, you should be able to pull this and have it come right on out. Like that. So, we we'll probably leak just a little bit, but that's only going to be what's in here to here. Whereas, the rest of it is going to be contained up top and a little bit left in the slate there. Which we will, we will be replacing as well. Okay. So back to what I was discussing earlier. This is one of the larger bolts from the sides. And this is the bolt from dead top. If you take a look, they're much different. Now if you try to put this hole, this bolt in the top hole, it'll crack the block. And if you try to put this one in this hole, you're not going to have nearly enough thread as this one actually starts engaging through this whereas this one would stop right where it would start. So make sure your bolts go in the right hole. So this is the plug that's on top of the transmission. And to disconnect it, you'll pull this tab back. It goes in like this, so you kinda gotta get up there with your finger and pop it out with your fingernail. You'll hear it click out, and then as you push down on this, it'll disengage and you can pull it right out. So this time we've got two bolts holding the transmission to the engine. One on this side and one up on this side. So we're going to get everything leveled out here and get our transmission jack over so that we can get the transmission secure on it and remove those two bolts and pull the trans off. We have separation factor people. So this is the second to last bolt coming out. This is on the top side on the passenger side and this particular one the same length as the top one on the driver's side. Now this one is the last bolt we have holding everything in. And as we take this out, we should see the transmission case start to separate. And actually we don't want anything major to be happening right now, but as this one comes out, we'll be freed up. Now I know a lot of people don't necessarily use safety straps, but I can tell you from someone who's dropped the transmission on himself, always use the strap. Make sure this guy is on there, and usually you want it to be pretty tight. And as you make adjustments and move the transmission, it can become a little loose because things start to settle in. So make sure that your your strap is always nice and secure because. If something shifts while you're trying to remove this, you do not want it falling off of this transmission jack on things. Now what we're going to want to do is make the engine and transmission neutral for the most part. Right now the engine is tilted backwards, but the motor mounts are wanting to put it back into its neutral position of straight up and down. So we will lift the transmission up so that it's the same level as where the engine wants to be and it should pull back without much effort. Now we can adjust this here. So the back of the transmission up, front of it down. Get everything nice and lined up. Okay, we're about as even as it gets. Now we'll gently start moving back. 
so that we can clear the engine. And we'll come down just a little bit because we have to be able to get around everything without any conflict. So, there we go. We've got our shifter out of the way, brakes out of the way. And now we can go up on top and just make sure that there's nothing else holding on so that we don't have any close calls or issues down the road. We definitely don't want any wires or anything to be compromised. And I think that we are as clear as it gets. So, I mean, Nice and slow. Keep an eye on everything here. Make sure there's nothing getting caught, nothing hanging up. And that's how you remove a transmission from a Supra. So to get these pressure plate uh, bolts out, we're going to want to use a 6 millimeter Allen head socket. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zap them loose just to break them loose and then really it's not going to be that big of a deal because we're not reusing the pressure plate or the clutch disc, but general rule of thumb is when you're taking these out, do them in a star pattern and evenly until they're off so that the spring doesn't get loaded one way or the other. Alright, so as you guys saw, we got the transmission out, the pressure plate off, the old clutch out, and at this point we're going to be go ahead and install the new South Bend clutch and continue with getting the transmission reinstalled um, along with the drive shaft. But everything else should be downhill from now. Uh, we got the rear subframe in and all that alignment will need to be dealt with, but that's going to wait until we, we're finished with everything else. But uh, here we go with installing the new clutch. The needle bearing in here is called a pilot bearing and really you wanna make sure that everything's okay with it and it should be replaced every time you replace the clutch but once again, brand new car and we're gonna let it ride this time. So your alignment tool should fit into that needle bearing just right so that you have this centered and that can stay there while you prepare to mount your pressure plate. Now there's no real way to clock this but there is there are three alignment dowels on the flywheel that will match up with the pressure plate so as long as you get one of them you should be good. And once that's on there you can get these started. Always replace your pressure plate bolts. And as these get tightened, you want to do so in a star pattern and very progressively so that as the pressure plate tightens down, the spring that you depress when you press your clutch pedal will uniformly be pressed against the clutch so that nothing gets cockeyed or pinched in there. bolts which will be rotating the engine backwards if it does rotate it which we don't want so we're going to put a tool in place to lock the flywheel and prevent it from rotating while we tighten these up should be good
horses. So, we are working on getting this transmission back up now that the clutch is installed. And we're going to basically be doing everything in reverse order of how we've done it so far. So, nothing too terribly exciting, but once we get everything all together here and buttoned up, we'll be able to give you some first impressions on how this clutch feels. And hopefully after we get all the alignment dialed in out back, we'll have some uh, really fun input on the Verkline stuff because it should make a pretty big difference on this car. All right, so as of last week, or the beginning of this week, we installed South Bend's new, what is equivalent to a stage three daily on the Supra, as well as a clutch delay valve modification, or well, I guess it's not really a modification, we replaced the slave cylinder itself. Now from the factory, these have a clutch delay valve, uh, but if you swap it out for an E90 slave cylinder, you can essentially, sorry, I'm trying to avoid potholes, you can essentially delete that valve without having to gut anything internally in your slave cylinder on the Supra, um, therefore allowing the clutch to do its job much better uh, with an aftermarket solution. Um, this is the first time I've been able to drive the car because Ryan's, we did a bunch of Verkline rear arms on the car as well as the clutch uh, and all, everything else that we've been doing to the cars haven't had a chance to drive it um, the clutch feels surprisingly stock it doesn't you know normally on the mark 7 and the mark 8 where we're most familiar with these south bend clutches um, you get a little bit more stiffer pedal um, and and a little bit more feedback in the pedal over stock uh, but compared to the stock super clutch it's about on par with each other, which will be nice for a lot of people who are trying to retain almost a, a dailyable uh, clutch pedal, or you know, if you're in traffic or something like that, it's not going to kill your leg, but while also being able to hold you know 600 plus foot pounds of torque, which is what they have this clutch uh, rated at. Now, this particular clutch material, as I've already mentioned previously, is a special Kevlar that they're working on that they're they're trying to release that gives you a larger window uh, before you have overheating issues or before you have um, inconsistencies uh, in its ability to grab. All right, so we haven't had the opportunity obviously to break the clutch in yet. Um, so I'm not gonna be too rowdy with the car. I'm just trying to get a general feel of the clutch pedal so I can let folks like you guys know you know, just how well or not well it feels. Um, we still have to drive the car roughly 500 miles at some point uh, in the next month or so, hopefully sooner, uh, to be able to make sure that everything, you know, works as it should. Um, but as far as drivability is concerned, it seems pretty easy, just like stock. So we shouldn't have any issues there. Now this car is on KWV4s as well as the entire Verkline catalog uh, outside of the rear subframe. Um, and with the BFI motor mounts and all of that, the drivetrain's pretty stiff uh, as well as the suspension. So I can't really say, you know, stock for stock as far as the ride now because it's, it's so much different than it was even two months ago. Uh, not to mention the fact that we have, you know, 315s on the back of the car. Oh, rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. That's not good. Now, this car will be in SEMA in Airlift's booth, so we will be swapping out the KWs uh, for Airlift's 3P management and bags. Uh, but more on that very soon. For now, we'll try and keep from destroying the kit and the fresh paint before SEMA, uh, which it seems is going to be a harder challenge to, uh, to do. So we'll get this clutch broken in 
And once it's broken in, we'll be able to come back to you guys with more information regarding the release of the clutch, um, as well as what you can expect the price to be and things like that. In the meantime, uh, feel free to message us, email us, or, or whatever if you're interested in anything like this, anything we have on the car, anything you might need for your Supra, as well as uh, the uh, E90 uh, slave cell. We can also offer you guys to, uh, to help y'all out and get it on the way. <laughs>